Father God, thank you for bringing us here this morning as a family. Thank you for the, the gift of worshiping through singing and music, that we can pro- proclaim your greatness and be inspired by the true words from Scripture and from talented people that want to glorify you. Father, open our hearts and our eyes and our minds and our ears this morning as we hear your word. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you may be seated. Good morning. In front of you, you will see envelopes and papers. Envelopes are for offerings. And the papers, are, the, the cards are for just communication with the church. New information, uh, fixed information, and prayer requests on the back. If you want the pastor and the staff to be praying for you. Uh, put all those things in the offering box in the back. For announcements, Hot August Nights uh, Ice Cream Social. This is coming up, so put it on your calendar. This is certainly one that you bring people that have never been to uh, church, or maybe they've, they, they've gotten too busy to come to church, or maybe they've gotten hurt and don't want to come to church. This is a, this is a fishing expedition, um, and they get ice cream. So, I mean, it's kind of a win. Um, it is, it's, it says hot August nights ice cream, but it's social. And we want to be, certainly want to be social to those that are lost, uh, those that have been uh, away from, from a, a church experience. They, uh, you might find this hard to believe that you, you are all a pretty nice group of people. And others need to know that. So bring them along and, and introduce friends, introduce new people. That's what this is for. It's an opportunity to reach out. So uh, it is August 24th, and that's a Wednesday. Uh, the fifth Sunday sing is tonight at Mount Lutheran, Mountain Lutheran Church. Uh, a fifth Sunday sing is a time in the evening to get together and do hymn, sing, hymn singing, to, to keep a foot in tradition uh, and to have some fellowship. So uh, that happens every, sun, every month with a fifth Sunday, and we can... Um, and just enjoy some, uh, looks like it's going to be some kind of uh, uh, a salad picnic and um, more information in there. Men's Bible study is still going on on Mondays. The gathering is still on Wednesdays and there's just some more information in here. So uh, Pastor Bob has an announcement. Hey, I got a great opportunity. I'm going to get into the camera here first. There I am. I got a great opportunity for us. I really mean this. If you're open and you're able, you got the skills, you got the availability, we got a blessing going on here. We really do. We have a blessing going on at Groveland E Free, and I'm pretty excited about it. But it is going to require some help. Uh, we have been wanting and praying for a children's ministry. We are hitting marks of 10 children on our Sunday morning. That's a pretty big deal. I see it. Thank you. That's a big deal. There were no children here. That's a big deal. I'm serious. Now, here's the kicker. If we want this opportunity, we got we to come forward. And I understand it's not for everybody, but I am putting a challenge out, a blessing of an opportunity. On Wednesday nights, we have the gathering. We have young families that want to come to that. They have young children. We can't expect them to take care of their children Well, they have the opportunity to attend the gathering. We have families that want to pay sitters, or I wouldn't even call it sinners. It's a ministry. That's not the right word. Families, young families that want to pay for people to be with the children during the gathering, 5 to 7 p.m. You don't have to be there every Wednesday, but maybe you're like, hey, pastor, that's an opportunity. I can do this, okay? Um, I can give you one Wednesday a month. Or I can give you one Wednesday every two or three months. So just think about this, because we need people to help our children on Wednesday night. I'm not talking youth, that's Tom and other people's area. Elementary children that are just too young, we don't want to leave them alone. Um, my parents didn't want to leave me alone until I was 35, okay? <laughs> Something about burning this or that, I don't know, a car, I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> But, but we have this opportunity. So just prayerfully, I'm serious. Think about, hey, I can, give the, I can give one Wednesday a month. I can give one Wednesday every two months. I can help out here. And we have 
young people, young moms and dads that would like their children to be able to be watched so they can come. And they're willing to pay for it. They really are. They've already said, we don't expect it to be for free. So we've got 10 children plus on Sunday morning. There's Kathy, 10 plus on Sunday morning lately. Except for today. Except for today. I spoke too soon. Okay, but we're getting there. And we, we're getting blessed with children. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that this is what we pray for. Let's step up to the plate, man. Let's step up to the plate and knock it out of the park. The Holy Spirit is showing up. So you guys think about that. You know who to see. And we do need some responses pretty quickly on that. Thank you. All right. We are turning it back over to music. Let's Not yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got to learn okay. the worship. That's right. Sally Not Copeland yet. already knows what's going on. Yeah. So let's, let's do that. I'm sorry, Kevin. I brought you up under false pretenses. But I'm not really sorry. I did this on purpose. And she's already shaking her head no. I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize and thank someone who has served our church faithfully over many years. Most of the time it's behind the scenes, but it benefits countless people. She is about to head to Oklahoma, having retired from Tanaya Elementary here in town after driving bus over a very long period of time, encouraging children each and every day. Many of you know and love Kevin Rose, but some of you don't even know who she is because she does things behind the scenes. She has taught children on Sunday mornings. I had her come up with her two charges this morning. There was an announcement about children's ministry, so it wasn't a complete fabrication. I told her she had to come up because the kids needed to hear this, but I really wanted them to clap for you. But on Sunday mornings, she not only creates her own scriptural curriculum, she gifts the children with much of everything she brings. When I went down there just now to get her a few minutes ago, they were using the VBS songs and the kids were up and moving and clapping and I loved it. So she's really dedicated to the kids. She arranges and sets out flowers seasonally here in the church. She organized the game section of Vacation Bible School over many, many years, and she was probably the most tired of almost anyone. <laughs> she sets up tables and made coffee for hospitality along with Penny McKee for many, many years and often stayed to help clean up at, at week after week after week, which isn't part of you. If you do hospitality, you set up and you clean up, but she did it all behind the scenes. This was shared with me, I love this story, with someone who happened to see her out sweeping the patio one weekday. When asked what she was doing, she shared that although men blow off the leaves and acorns on Saturdays for Sunday service, there were so many acorns falling that she wanted to sweep them up so Pam would be safe walking into the church. <laughs> no one asks her to do things. She sees something that needs to be done and she does it. We are richer as a church because God blessed us with Kevin. I have a doubt that God already has a place to use her in Oklahoma, and I know her love for the Lord will shine there. There's a cake to celebrate Kevin during hospitality, and I hope, even if you've never met her, that you will take the chance to thank her for her faithful service here at Groveland Evangelical Free Church. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, and right now she's just thrilled that we didn't pull her up on stage um, hold on Kevin you can't leave yet Kevin Kevin Rose don't run off yet <laughs> See, uh, my children were on Kevin's bus one year and also Kevin taught them in Sunday school Melanie, my expression one, comes up to me one day about seven or eight years old. She's all, Kevin is so wonderful. She's so nice and she takes such good care of us here. Why is she so strict on the bus? <laughs> and I asked Melanie at, at seven or eight years old, well, why do you think that is? Well, the bus, you have to be safe and you have to make sure the children get home safe. And I went, that's exactly right. 
And as, as one who had been admonished on many occasions by Kevin over the last 30 years, um, thank you. Okay, now you can run away. All right, let's continue with worship before I start crying. <laughs> What's happening? Is that the Holy Spirit we've been talking about? <laughs> Good morning. Um, actually, I'd like to start off this morning with a little story. Uh, so I read devotionals in the morning. And uh, one of the reasons I do that is because I want to be in the Word but it's a pretty big book, not quite sure where to go most of the time. So this morning, I was told to read First Chronicles 9.33, and I thought, oh great, this is not the way I wanted to start my day. Um, Chronicles can be a very hard uh, passage or, or book to read. And then the scripture said, now these, the singers, the heads of fathers' houses of the Levites, were in the chambers of the temple free from other service, for they were on duty day and night. And uh, this part of Chronicles is where the Israelites have come back to the temple and they've given a long genealogy of those who were called back and they are so happy to be back in their home, back in their temple, that they've put these Levites these heads of fathers' houses in chambers in the temple. What I didn't get was for they were on duty day and night. Now, does that mean they were singing constantly 24 hours a day? Probably not, but they were ready and they were preparing and they were encouraging one another and it was day and night. It was not something that was casual, it was their life. So then you go to the whole other end of the book, the whole book, the Bible. In Revelation 4, 8, and the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within, and day and night they never cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So way back in the beginning, all the way through the end of the story, it's praise to God, God Almighty. Um, so we've been talking about the Holy Spirit a lot. Bob's been talking mostly. Um, we, uh, we just sang about it. Uh, I'd like to mention that uh, the highlights that was put out this week talks about the Holy Spirit. Um, I'd just like to mention that the same Holy Spirit that's being talked about, that's being sung about, that is guiding Bob in his message about the Holy Spirit, that's the same Holy Spirit that dwells in each and every one of us. Um, he dwells in us as God's children, as the church, which is the body of Christ. So I'd like us to keep that in mind as we ask for open hearts and ears to hear the message that Bob has for us this morning. Um, and I'll go out on a limb. So if there is anyone here today that has not experienced that indwelling of the Holy Spirit, who has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, let me make sure you hear this today. It is available to you personally. If you feel a desire or a call on your heart today, grab anyone around you who will either talk to you or can get you to someone who can explain what you need to do next. If you're feeling that, don't leave today without taking action. Amen. So, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity, um, the facility that we have here to gather together like-minded Christians to worship, to glorify your name, to further your kingdom. We receive more blessings than we know. Many of the blessings I know that I receive, I don't even recognize sometimes until I see them in the rear view mirror. We thank you for those that we ask for and receive and those that we don't ask for. 
We'd like to thank you for all those who are in service. Uh, I ask that you protect those who are protecting us, whether that be firefighters, law enforcement, military. There's many people who have laid down their lives that we can gather here today. Um, as we listen to the message today, let us remember who we're talking about and let us remember that we gather here today, but it's not only this day that the Holy Spirit indwells us. Let us take what we hear and learn this morning into the following week, remembering to stay in contact with like-minded brothers and sisters, realizing that the Holy Spirit is with us always. And we pray all this in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Doug. Amen. All right. Just going to get the things in motion here. There we go. Amen. All right. We went down. My son, John, is here visiting us from the great state of Minnesota. And he landed in Sacramento on Thursday. And we went down to San Diego by way of Bakersfield. And I'm learning about California. Do you know that you have a thing in Cal place in California called the Central Valley, right? Yeah. It's hot. It's really hot. Doesn't cool off. Never. <laughs> we got to Bakersfield. It was like 6.30 at night. It was 100 degrees. We went out to eat at 7.30 at night. It was 100 degrees. Got up in the morning. It was 100 degrees. <laughs> We went to San Diego. That's awesome. 75 degrees with an ocean breeze. That's a beautiful place. I like that place. Not as good as Pine Mountain Lake and Groveland, but it's good. Um, and you know, one of the things I appreciate about San Diego, I'm, I'm a man who appreciates military. I have many friends who have given their selves in service, um, injured, and i just very appreciative of military. And we were at Petco Park, and the twins, better known as the Twinkies, were playing the Padres, and we lost, but we won the next night, so don't worry. Anyway, before the game started, they did the national anthem, and you don't get this in every city, and they, the singer belted out in a good way. I shouldn't say that's, I'm not a great singer, so forgive me the words I use, but very, very meaningfully said, the, the land of the free and the home of the brave, and the stadium just cheered. I think we need more of that. Amen. Thank you for our, our men and women that serve. And then we went out of San Diego and out of L.A. and we came down that hill. I call it Wally World, Six Flags. And we got back down to Bakersfield and it was hot. <laughs> I never looked forward to get up in those hills of Groveland. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the air conditioning. <laughs> Anyway, if you're from Bakerfield, forgive me, it's hot. Okay, let's turn the table to the Holy Spirit. Doug just led me in, the music led us in. We're going we're gonna to look at John's Gospel, the third chapter. I'm telling you people, if you want something to read in your quiet time this week, or you're looking for something to read, this is a wonderful chapter. It's about John the Baptist, the last half of it, but the first half is about a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus had everything. <clears throat> he had an education. He was a teacher of the law, therefore part of the temple, a rabbi, a Jewish high priest, but he had earned even a higher right. He was part of the local high council, as it tells us in the scripture. He was a judge. So in other words, I come to the community temple because um, someone has wronged me by Jewish law and I want a ruling on it so I go to the rabbi and the rabbi says well this is what the law says let's let the judges decide Nicodemus steps in now and decides if my ruling is accurate of the understanding of the law or not that's how high he was he had a lot of stuff he was affluent he was very much part of that community in a very educated, affluent way. He did not want to ruin his reputation with Jesus during the day. So he came to Jesus by night. 
but with great respect. Because he's interested in a man who might possibly be the Son of God and is talking about this thing called the Spirit. He's talking about the possibility of getting excited for Christ. Finding meaning in life with purpose and potential. Now, there was a Pharisee, a, a man named Nicodemus who was a member of the Jewish ruling council, a judge. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, that's a, that's a very big sign of respect. He didn't call him a traveling evangelist. He didn't call him a midnight preacher. He called him a rabbi with a capital R, a teacher of the word. We know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Whew. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. He's a little bewildered. And he's not being sarcastic. He wants truth. He's looking for salvation. He's looking for the Spirit. Surely they cannot enter a second time into a mother's womb to be born. You've got to understand, he's seen Jesus do some miraculous things. He's possibly not being sarcastic. He's like, can you allow that? Can you allow me to have a second chance at this life? And Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water. That's a symbol of baptism. And the Spirit, we're introducing the Holy Spirit already. The resurrection hasn't even happened. The gift of the Spirit has yet to be born in the book of Acts. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. Amen. Lord, Doug has prayed us up. We want to hear from you. Holy Spirit, help us see you rain. Help us see you. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, make yourself real. Amen. Amen. So as we continue to go looking at the Spirit, and today I want to get into this conversation with Nicodemus because this is an incredible conversation. One of the most important verses of all of the Bible is in this passage, in this conversation. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, his only son, who whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. We see it at every, every event. We see it all over the place. And that's part of this conversation, just how powerful it is. But before we get there, let's just start at the beginning. And, and I want to start this way. I am a football fan. Uh, my son loves baseball, but he also loves football. He's a college football fan. I'm an NFL fan. In case you haven't heard, there's a team in Minnesota. They started training camp called the Vikings, and the 49ers are there too. They're starting training camp. Rams, everybody's starting training camp for the NFL this week. Next Thursday, the Hall of Fame game, and Canton's going to be played, and they're going to induct some people into the Hall of Fame. All of that's going on, in case you're wondering. Now, let's think about the church. Imagine if you can... And Francis Chan shares this story. He's not the only one. A lot of theologians have shared this story. Imagine, if you can, um, a, a, a football team. They're, they're in the huddle. They know the play. They get out. They line up in formation, the eye formation. They've got the line there, the quarterback, the running back. Everything's ready to go. They know their assignment to pull. They know their assignment to block. They know their assignment to open the gaps. Everything's ready to go. But then as they get in formation, they stop and they walk back to the, to the bleachers. People are laughing at them. What, what's going on? It's kind of like the Vikings sometimes. Just kidding. Okay. Anyway, they, they, they don't, what's going on? Who does this? No one, and, and, and if we look at the church in general, we say a lot of important stuff on Sunday morning. We get excited on Sunday morning. We have opportunity and challenge on Sunday morning. But then Monday, we 
at church in general, we, okay, that's done. Yeah, damp time. <laughs> done. Don't need to worry about that till Sunday. I want to share a really neat story. I've been given permission to share this over the years. This is a wonderful story, and it says a lot. I couldn't believe the remark. I said, I need to share that. He said, okay, Pastor Bob. A friend of mine uh, from Minnesota, we, he came to Christ. He asked Christ into his heart. He had a Holy Spirit moment, a salvation-based moment, a real thing. He, Nicodemus, he asked Christ into his heart. I got to be a part of that. That's not important, but what's important, his life was forever changed. He was empty. And when we were trying to hash this all out, He's a salesman, a very good salesman in, back in Minnesota. He said to me, he said, you know, Bob, I used to go to church on Sunday. I want you to catch this. I used to go to church because it was the lesser of two evils. Now I go to church because I'm falling in love with God. But let's back up there. I used to go to church um, because it was the lesser of two evils. Man, I love that. I don't like it, but it was like, that hits home. That hits home. You know, my wife went, my son, they had a son together, um, I, and I did the right thing so I could put on a good, good example. And I fought through it because it was the lesser of two evils. Nicodemus is tired. He's, he's educated. He knows his Torah. He knows his Old Testament. He sees Jesus. Jesus has a glow. Jesus makes things happen. Jesus seems right. And he's like, I, I got to go see more about this. I am not going to pass this opportunity up. And he asks him, what, what's going on? Now, there was a man, a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish consul. He's a judge. The scriptures clearly state that. He knows. He studied the word. He's got the head knowledge. But he's tired of the lesser of two evils. And he came to Jesus at night and he said, Rabbi, we know you're from God. These things wouldn't be happening. And because they're happening, I want to know more. I want to do something with my faith on Monday. I want to do something with my faith during lunch. I want to do something with my faith with my coworkers. I want to do something with my faith with my family. I want to do something with my faith for my community. I want people to know about Jesus. And more importantly, I want the Holy Spirit to come alive. What am I going to do this week to do that? And there's all kinds of ways to do that. The Holy Spirit, and I'm going to get into this more in the next few weeks, is an advocate, a coach, a helper, a mentor. The Holy Spirit is one that I go to when I'm like, okay, I got a tough decision here. And I'm talking to the Holy Spirit. Help me know which road to take, which way to go. And the Holy Spirit can say, talk to this person. Read this book of the Bible. Read this verse. Journal on this. The Holy Spirit coaches us through salvation as we live it out each day. And the Holy Spirit actually nudges us and says, you know, you should have done better. I was at in and out and um, it was coming down the hill from, I call it Wally World, Six Flags, down into the Vought Valley, and there's a big outlet mall, and we're at in and out There's like 5,000 people there, and I'm waiting for my meal, <laughs> and I'm just sitting there, and I'm next to Kelly, and, and we're just kind of sitting there, and there, I, look to them, I look to my right, and there's firefighters. They're having lunch. Now, Kelly always, you know, don't disrupt their lunch. Okay. <laughs> but I thanked them. I asked them how the oak fire, because I haven't been watching everything, and they told me it's, at least as of yesterday, it was over 50% plus contained. It's heading the right direction. And I thanked them. I said, we live in Groveland. And they knew where that was. I said, if the wind changes, we're not going to be in the right way. And I'm thankful for what, you're, what you do, your fire lines. And they were very, and then I let them have lunch. 
Because the Holy Spirit's like, they're right here, right next to you. I don't know them. They're from somewhere in greater L.A., and they were helping in the fire this week. And they were getting off duty, and they have some time now to go be with their families. The Holy Spirit nudges us and says, come on, man. They're right here. Pray for them. Let them know you're thankful. The Holy Spirit nudges us. Come on, man. You, you know that you can invite this person to the ice cream social. I know it as the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, do it. This is a perfect person to invite. Give them the invite card. We're going to have them next week. You know that you can pray with this person. You know you should start the... <coughs> you know that you should go to this person and you should say, you want to start a, a Bible study together? And they're saying, huh, I've been waiting for someone to ask me to do this for three years. Thank you. And you're like, well, then I got to meet with this person, God. Yeah. And I got to study the book, God. And I got to be ready. Yeah. Lot to ask, isn't it? No. <laughs> Holy Spirit's saying, you can do this. And Nicodemus is starting to realize there's more to life than head knowledge. And Jesus replies. This is where it gets really fun. Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. There's a word that the world doesn't like sometimes. Born again. Oh, that's a bunch of evangelicals that are going to tell me I'm no good, I'm a sinner, and I, I vote for the wrong person, and I'm just never going to be right with God. <laughs> you know what? All it is is saying you get a whole other shot at life with grace. What we have turned it into in this world, <clears throat> you get a whole other shot at life with grace. Yeah. I mean, now Nicodemus has something he can latch on to. This is good stuff. This is something that I want to know more about. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I should come more during the day, maybe. I should investigate. This is not just middle-of-the-night stuff. This, are you telling me that I can have a whole other chance at life with Jesus Christ forgiving me and the Holy Spirit being my advocate, my coach, my guide, helping me make better decisions than I've done so far? Yeah. Am I going to mess up? Yeah. Am I going to have grace? Yeah, that's the beauty of it. I'm going to teach you as the Holy Spirit. But that's really hard to grasp. You know those, you can say it, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And there isn't. I'm serious. Except for grace and God. I've been on the planes when they want to give you those free credit cards. There's no such thing as a free, there's always that gimmick. When Jesus is saying this is free and this is real, and it's truth. And Nicodemus is like, yeah, I've heard that before. How can someone be born when they are of old? Nicodemus asked. Surely. Now, I think he's serious here. This is not sarcasm. Because if I got a second shot at life at 57 years of age, I'm going to ask. I've seen Jesus do miracles. I've seen Jesus, Nicodemus is saying. They lowered that guy through the roof, and he walked. That blind, that blind man can see. Uh, the, the woman is being healed. Maybe, maybe we can, I know it sounds crazy, but I've seen Jesus do enough miracles. Maybe I can be born again, literally. I get a second chance at life. Surely they cannot enter a second time into the mother's womb to be born. Is it that easy? Is it that good? Is it that possible? Is it that real? Or do I just deal with the fact that, you know what, religion is just the lesser of two evils in life? Are we interested in asking Jesus to be our yes today? Are we interested in asking the Holy Spirit to be our yes today? Well, if I do that, Pastor, then God's going to ask me to help with something. 
Yeah, you know, that's true. Well, I don't want to get my feet wet. Well, that's part of Christianity. That's part of salvation. And that's why we get so excited because once we realize that God has saved us and given us that third part of the Trinity, that third part of God, and said, I want to help you come alive. We get challenged in life. And we get challenged in such a way that that's to take me out of my comfort zone. I don't even want to be here this long because the heat's starting to hit. But I'll do it. Jesus answered. Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water in the Spirit. It's not the third part of the Trinity to be left out. It's not the third part of the Trinity to say, you know, I can deal with God, I can even deal with Jesus, but the Holy Spirit, eh." no, it's God in one, three in one. It's part of God. It makes up what God is. And you're saying, well, pastor, you know, I'm I'm not sure what that means. Well, that's why I'm here. I'm not making that up. That's why we talk. If you want to know more, and I mean this, um, two in the morning, but I'll do it. Probably shouldn't have said that because you said you do it. Okay. I'm here. Let's talk about that. Let's unfold that. What does it mean to be in the Spirit? I'm your pastor, man. I love doing that. That's stuff I gel in. I want to do that. Or maybe you have a friend that's close and you're like, I know, I know that she or he knows about the whole Talk to them because they're waiting for you to ask. That's why we're a church. That's why we're God, part of God when I say God. That's why we're the community of God shining. And you're like, well, maybe I want to get baptized. Amen. I really mean that. You know, this is the coolest thing about our area. We got, I know we have a baptismal fountain. We can use that too. I get that. But we have a lake. And it's still warm. And we can have that baptism. And we can celebrate what it means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I would like to meet and talk with you about that so we know what that means. And when we do that properly, we understand that. An outward sign of an inward belief. But that's what it's all about. Those are joyous occasions. That's when God says, yay! And God says, thank you, and the angel starts singing. And Nicodemus, the choir is already singing because the mind is rolling. So really, the question is, if we want the Holy Spirit to make the Holy Spirit real to us, then we need to be open to the Holy Spirit. He's knocking on our door. He's saying, hey, we got children. Hey, we got youth. Hey, we got small group ministry. Hey, we're growing. Hey, let's come alive. Let's get on fire. Nicodemus, it's not just about the lesser of two evils. It's about asking, how real do you want to get? He goes in Jesus and read this in your, your quiet time. He says, you see the wind, don't you? You hear the wind. I don't know about you, but I've been sitting out on the gathering some Wednesday nights, and it, it's kind of hot, not, you know, the sun setting, and all of a sudden a breeze comes up. And it feels so good. I mean it, just feel, and I think, oh, thank you, Spirit. Just let it come in. I didn't make that breeze. You didn't make that breeze. God made that breeze. And, and he says to Nicodemus, you see the wind, don't you? But can you take it? Can you, can you hold it in your hand? Can you show it to me? No. Because it's God-given. Let the Spirit come to you, too. Don't be so afraid, Nicodemus. Don't be so afraid. What are you waiting for? And so the question and the challenge today is is really twofold as we begin to wrap this up a little quickly here, but wrap it up. The first thing is, do I know Christ as my Savior? 
Doug alluded to that. That's okay if you don't. If I don't, then I'm in the right place. That's wonderful. If I don't know Christ as my Savior, this is where I want to be. And do I want to meet like Nicodemus? Do I want to say, come into my life. Come in and see me. I'll back up here a little bit. No, it's not there, but you go to John's Gospel, and you go to the 19th chapter in verse 39, because in chapter 3, it doesn't say what Nicodemus decided. They say a long conversation in the middle of the night. John's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 39. Chapter 19, verse 39. Some of you are like, hey, I'm going there right now. That's cool. John's Gospel, chapter 19, 39. It doesn't say what Nicodemus decided. But as we get to the death of Jesus, and Jesus now is being buried, He hasn't resurrected yet, that's coming soon, but He's died on Good Friday, He's being buried. Nicodemus had 70-some pounds of expenses that he spent with another guy that's there also, and they made sure that Jesus had a proper burial. That's a lot of money in those days. That's not just a $20 bill. Nicodemus put a lot of salary out there so that in respect, I almost wonder if Nicodemus was hoping and praying and thinking and faithfully wondering, is the Spirit going to show up? Is there going to be a resurrection? And it came. And it came for Nicodemus. I'm thinking here today, well, maybe I want to know more about Jesus. We're going to pray about that in just a bit. Maybe I want to know more about the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray about that in just a bit. Maybe I want to get baptized by the Holy Spirit. Maybe I want to celebrate what's in me in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's great. I want to talk to pastor about that. I want to pursue that. And really, the question that's left is, are we ready to ask God, are you going to come alive? Yes. Am I going to say yes to God? Am I going to leave like Nicodemus did in John's Gospel, chapter 3, and I'm going to leave in the middle of the night and say, you know what, I had enough for now? I'll think about it. That's up to the person to decide that. At least you're thinking about it. And then Later on in John's Gospel, the 19th chapter, we find out Nicodemus was more than thinking about it. Now let's jump to the book of Acts. I've preached on this before. Chapter 4, Peter and John are fishing. The Holy Spirit has revealed Himself. Acts 1, chapter 1 and 2, the Holy Spirit has is, is showed up. And everybody now, there's a lot of people that understand what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and Peter and John are going to the temple daily because they're going fishing for people. They want to introduce Christ to people. They want to introduce the Holy Spirit to people. And a man is there who can't walk, and the man says, hey, can you heal me? Well, actually, he said, you know what? I don't know if you can heal me. I don't know what you're all about, but do you have some money for me? And Peter and John said, you know, silver and gold have I none, but in the name of Jesus Christ, which is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, rise up and walk. And certain Pharisees and, and Nicodemus's crowd, the rabbis get all upset. They arrest him because they're talking about a resurrected Jesus. And then Peter and John begin to preach to the rabbis and to the Pharisees can almost see Nicodemus, part of this crowd in Jerusalem. And, and they say, they're saying things that are amazing. They're saying in Acts chapter 4, Scripture, that people that study for years know, much less some fishermen. How do they know all this? How do they know all that Jesus, how do they know about all the stuff that God has revealed to them? And these Pharisees, in the midst of their judgment, literally, it's right there, the Word of God. You can't argue with the Word. When they saw, that's the Pharisees, when they saw the courage of Peter and John, that's the belief, the passion, and the truth, and the words, and the academia that they were bringing out, when they saw that, they realized they were unschooled, ordinary men. 
and they were astonished. The Spirit was working in them. You want to talk about coaching? You want to talk about an advocate in someone's life? Folks, when I have to go to a certain meeting, or I have to be part of something that I'm uncomfortable in, or I have to be part of something that I'm a little, I'm not sure of, I've got enough knowledge to do it, but I'm still scared, I'm still fearful, I literally say, Holy Spirit, help me. I say that with meaning and depth. I literally pray, Holy Spirit, help me. I can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And I'm amazed if I've done my homework, if I'm ready. If I've done my homework, I'm amazed the way the Holy Spirit shows up. I can also remember as a new Christian, uh, I was in high school. I had a test, a spelling test, not my greatest uh, area of expertise. And I didn't study for it. I didn't. I was lazy. I blew it off. I made a mistake. And I said, Holy Spirit, help me. Guess what? The Holy Spirit helped me, helped me get an F so I could retake the test and study for it. I did. The teacher said, this is not like you. And I said, this year. The, anyway, that year I had made a new, I was living a different life that year. I was a high school senior. I was a born-again Christian. I was excited. And character was starting to flow out. And the teacher said, this isn't like you. What happened? Just tell me. And I finally said, that's the Holy Spirit coaching me. Knocking me on the shoulder. You tell her you didn't study. Tell her the truth. Truth prevails. I could hear the Holy Spirit tell her. I said, I I didn't study. Okay. That's all right. That's all it is. I'm thinking, yeah, but my parents aren't going to be real happy. We'll retake it. But you're going to study. And I did. And I got a B. I was happy. Because the Holy Spirit made the Holy Spirit himself real to us. Read what Judy wrote, not to lift her up, but read about those verses are in there for a reason on that highlight thing. It's all about the coaching. It's all about the advocate. This is all quiet time stuff. This is to help us grow as Christians. So the challenge as we close in prayer today, we don't exactly know what Nicodemus did, but we know that he showed up at the the death of Jesus before the resurrection. And we know that he shelled out 75 pounds worth of monetary value so that he could be buried properly. We know that Peter and John showed up at the temple and in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Peter and John, but in the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, healed people. We know that rabbis that were equivalent to Nicodemus or even a little lower than him were astonished. And so the challenge is, do I want the Holy Spirit in my life? No, we walk out here and say it's the lesser of two evils. That's done. Or we can say, God, just show up and show off. And I mean that in the right way, the most correct way possible. Show up and let me see Jesus today. Let me see the Holy Spirit today. Let me see how real you are today. And then tomorrow when we get up, show up and let me see Jesus. Let me see the Holy Spirit. Let me, oh, you want me to help that person? Oh. Oh, you want me to volunteer for that in the community? Oh. Oh, you want me to do, oh. Okay, 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 okay. Holy Spirit, thank you. I'm a little scared. I'm a little nervous, but thank you. Let's move to a time of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for a man named Nicodemus. We really do, because it involves so much else, so much more. And Lord, in the honesty of our prayer, there are times when we come to you in the dark of night, because we just, we're, we're scared. We're scared about what others might think. We're worried about where we might go with this conversation. But we leave in the light of Christ.
We come to you in the dark of night because we feel like we're living in a world where we just want to get the lesser of two evils done. We come to you in the dark of night because we're just really, we're doubtful. We've seen your church, and it's not that great sometimes. People stab us in the back, they, they judge us, and they have no idea the shoes we're walking in, but they just jump to conclusions. But we leave in the light of Christ. And so, Holy Spirit, as we come to you today, Jesus, as we come to you, God, as we come to you, first things, Lord, help us know what salvation is. I know that a lot of us may know that, Lord, but help us just revisit that. Like Nicodemus, Lord, help us say, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Forgive my sins. Because of your death on the cross, help us know we're forgiven, Lord. Help us say, Father, forgive me, that with your arms wide open on that cross, and you look at us and you say, Father, forgive them as you're dying, because we don't know what we're doing. Show up, Holy Spirit. We know you're here. Help us see you. And let us reach that moment of salvation again. Or maybe for the first time. Glory be to God. Things are happening, Lord. Glory be to God. Whether it's online or right here, Lord, glory be to God. And also, Lord, Holy Spirit, now that we believe in your resurrection, now that we know we've been born again, now that we know we will live forever in eternity, now that we know that we have Jesus as our Savior with a capital S, now that we know the Lord with a capital L puts his hands on our shoulders and looks at us in the eyes and says, you are worthy. Holy Spirit, help us see you. We know you're here. All we have to do is look at the sunset or the sunrise, the mountains and the form you made them. No accident. It's your divine plan. We know you're here. Holy Spirit, make yourself real. Be our coach. Be our advocate. Help us get on fire. Help us reign, Holy Spirit. Reign. Help us sit in your waterfall. Help that water just come down on the top of our heads as an outward sign of an inward belief. Holy Spirit, I hear you talking already. I hear you, Holy Spirit. I hear you. Reign on us. I know you're talking. I know that this community needs a Christian church. Groveland Evangelical Free is asking right now, can we be that church? Help us be that church. People need you. They're hungry. And they're tired of the lesser of two evils. Holy Spirit, thank you. And so we just thank you. As we move out of this service, Lord, we honor a good friend, a lady who's going to Oklahoma. We think of all the seeds she planted. Holy Spirit, make yourself real. And help us talk to each other. Grow with each other. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this moment. I, I, I want it to continue, but I know we, we got to move into the world. Worship is over. The mission work, service begins, Lord. Help us move into the world because the Holy Spirit's right with us, coaching us along the way, digging to your word. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for what's ahead this week. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
We love you, and you love us more than we could love you. Thank you. Thank you. And all of God's people say, amen. Amen. Hey, I'm going to invite music up here. If you ever want to talk, we're here. Got a lot of things. Music team, come on up. We're going to close with this song. If it's real, you know it's real. We are not here to send you out the door with nothing. We have devotion books, daily bread. We have small groups, everything. Just talk to us. Let us know. And I, I thank you as I invite the music team to close. Please stand. Please stand. <clears throat> We're going to be...